Ah, uh, yeah, the DJI Action 4 did fall on the ground. But before we get into how this happens, uh, let's start from the start. So DJI ended up sending me an email and they asked me if I wanted to review the Action 4 and obviously I said yes. Uh, so I ended up messaging my brother, he lives down in Newcastle, which is about a one and a half hour plane flight away because he knows a few FMX riders. He does a lot of work for the Nitro Circus, which if you don't know is awesome freestyle BMXs, uh, all those kind of tricks and, and motocross. It's ridiculous, but he knows a few FMX riders and we teed up with one FMX rider and he obviously was riding that weekend and he wanted to help out. So we're gonna be talking about the action for, what are the pros and cons, what are the full specs of this thing, how good is it? And there's so much we need to get through, but the chapters will be below. Now, before we get into the specs, yes, this did take a fall and no, it didn't wreck it at all. It maybe took a little bit of a dint on the corner of this camera, but the lens is unscratched, the screen is unscratched it is immaculate condition so I'm pretty lucky there but uh, I mean is that a durability test so it does pass the durability test there now one of the first things that we need to talk about is the mounting options these are the same mounting options as the Osmo Action 3 so if you do actually have a lot of the cases a lot of the mounting stuff it's gonna fit, so that is amazing and really, really, really good to hear because I know a lot of people, you know, invest in a few different mounting options for this and uh, you don't wanna have to keep changing every time there's a newer body design. But I'm very happy to say that this bottom here is the same as the Action 3, so that is a big plus. So right from the bat, the sensor size has changed. They've gone for a one over 1.3 inch sensor, which is almost, it's so close to a one inch sensor, but the last version did have a one over 1.7 inch sensor. So you're gonna have slightly bigger sensor, which potentially could mean just better low light performance and maybe better image quality. Some of the outstanding features as well, this one does have 10 bit with D-Log M, so you can actually grade this footage to however you want. But for the sake of the FMX stuff, I've literally put this in normal color picture profile so you can see what this looks directly out of the action camera. So now the Action 3 had a pretty major issue that a lot of people were talking about. Essentially the lens was out of focus. So if you were holding it in front of you, you weren't actually in focus. It was out of focus. Like every one I had was completely out of focus. And I put hold up, hold up. Don't get me wrong. Cause the last one was definitely better, but yeah, it was, it was out of focus. And have they fixed that in this camera? Yes, they have. It doesn't seem like it is out of focus. So I know a lot of you Action 3 users will be very, very happy about that. This thing is perfect. Everything is in focus and you can literally see yourself if you are, you know, arm's length away and vlogging with this camera. So I'd just like to jump in here and just remind you to give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. That really does help this channel out and subscribe, obviously, if you haven't already. But let's get back into the video. So now this action camera does shoot up to 4K at 120 frames per second in 16x9 or 4x3. And you are able to use Rocksteady and Rocksteady Plus in 4K 120 frames per second, but you don't have Horizon Steady or Horizon Balancing. Now with Horizon Balancing, you can do it at 4K 60. Essentially what that does, it allows you to tilt this camera up to 45 degrees and keeps the horizon 100% steady, which is amazing. But you have to utilize 16 by nine. This does not work in four by three. And if you wanna go that one step further, you can dial it back to 2.7K in 16 by nine and it'll give you horizon steady. So essentially, if you tilt this camera a whole 360 degrees, the image is going to stay perfectly steady. So that is a bit of a niche thing. I actually didn't want to do that. I had it on horizon balancing the whole time. And if anything, 
Rocksteady or Rocksteady Plus is perfectly fine because you do want some of those movements, especially if you are doing complete action sports. But there are some moments where you want that horizon to be 100% steady, even if you're upside down, left, right, in and out, all those kind of things. It really just depends and it gives you so much more flexibility when you're utilizing this action camera. And what I want to talk about is overheating with this camera. Now, GoPro did suffer with their camera when it comes to overheating, whereas the Osmo Action did very, very well. Now, you do have to realize that when it comes to overheating tests, the Action camera isn't meant to be just sat there in a still environment with no wind moving. Essentially, this is an action camera. It's gonna be strapped to someone. There's going to be air moving around it, so it's gonna be cooling down. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna be testing the overheating test in just my regular 24 degrees studio. So in this studio test, it was 24 degrees Celsius. I filmed at 4K 60 with horizon balancing on, and I was able to get 45 minutes, and then the prompts come up on the screen to say that it was overheating, the screen turned off, but it was still recording, which allows you to record a little bit further. And then I tried this again the next day and I got about 38 minutes, but then the screen turned off and I was able to record to one hour and 22 minutes. <sighs> okay, so it finally turned off. What have we got? Uh, one hour and about 22 minutes on 4K 60, 24 degrees Celsius room. Wow, that's, that's impressive. But like I said, when it comes to action cameras, these are generally used on the go. So there will be wind cooling down the body, which will give you almost infinite record times. I think some of the things that I do appreciate is the sharpness that you can control and also the noise suppression. So the sharpness goes up to zero to four, and then the noise suppression goes from zero to three. So there's a few different settings that you can actually adjust the image quality, but generally I try and keep everything at zero and zero. It does recommend uh, a standard setting, which you can go into, which I think is two noise suppression and one sharpness, I think it is. Uh, whatever it is, you just gotta try and test and and find your favorite but if anything I like to put it on zero and zero and then just do everything else in post-production if I need to now what's the image quality like in 4k 30 and 4k 60 now I love the image quality in 4k 25 50 and 100 frames per second and even if we compare them side by side you can see the image quality is very similar between the three frame rates and even if we look at 2.7k in 25 2.7k in 50 and 100 you can see there is less resolution than that 4k 4k definitely is that sweet spot in this camera but even if you use 2.7K, not many people would actually notice. It still looks pretty decent, especially if you are watching on an iPhone. All right, so we're out testing the audio quality in this Action 4, and this is pretty much with no wind noise reduction, and also you're able to control the noise direction from coming from the front or just off, which I think is more omnidirectional. So um, what does this sound like? It is pretty windy. Um, and I'm going to switch on noise reduction right now. And now we've got it on wind noise reduction. This should sound a little bit better, but sometimes, well, majority of the time, when you actually switch wind noise reduction on, it doesn't sound really that great. But uh, internal microphones will never really sound as good as obviously connecting a shotgun microphone to this camera. So what is this thing like in low light? Well, I took this to Time Zone. If you guys don't have Time Zone, essentially it's just like a little game arcade place we could play a whole bunch of games, win some fluffy toys, and it was great. So it was really good to go uh, with my brother and my little niece, and they played a whole bunch of games together. It was amazing. And, you know, the low-light performance in this thing actually is really, really good. And what I wanted to do was just test this in auto ISO. So I pretty much put it in auto settings, but I capped the ISO level at 3200. And the noise suppression was on zero, and sharpness was on zero as well. And I'm very, very happy. This does seem like the low light performance is a little bit better than the previous version, but obviously the other versions as well. Okay, now we do have to talk about stability. Now, DJI did actually send me some of their ND filters, but when it comes to action sports, I don't like to use ND filters whatsoever because the main thing the Rocksteady and Rocksteady Plus really relies on is having a fast shutter. And if you're slowing your shutter down to 1 50th uh, or 1 60th, you're actually going to introduce too much motion blur 
and this won't be able to stable it enough. So having an increased shutter or a crank shutter is actually going to help with that stability. So I didn't utilize the ND filters in this video and I made sure that the shutter was absolutely cranked. Now I did set this to pretty much full auto, except I kept the ISO at the lowest level. So the shutter would fluctuate the whole time, depending on obviously the scene. And the stability was fairly good. It really came down to uh, when I mounted it on the handlebars, that's when it did introduce, you know, a little bit of wobbly, a little bit of warpness in the footage uh, because super fast, this is a motocross, this is absolutely crazy intense, but still you probably wouldn't even notice a difference unless I said it. But when it was on his chest mount and when it was on the front of the mudguard, I really liked it, it looked absolutely brilliant. And one of the things is when I actually ran right next to the motorbike and held this in my hand, it literally looked like this was on a gimbal. The stabilization in these things are absolutely incredible. And when it comes to trying to get a gimbal for these, you probably wouldn't even need to. These are incredible when it comes to stability. Now I do believe the Action 3, you were able to use this as a webcam and also live stream, and you've still got those features in this as well. So you can live stream, I think on Facebook and YouTube, and they obviously use this as a webcam, but hey, you, majority of the time, you're probably just gonna use your laptop or your phone when it comes to webcams uh, or lives. But hey, if you are on the slopes, you know, out in the mountains, you can still utilize this, no problems. Now, when it comes to the user interface, it does feel very snappy and very fast. What I didn't like about the GoPro cameras is that, you know, their touch interface wasn't exactly the greatest. You touch a few things and it wouldn't really register. Whereas this one is amazing on the back, but not just the back, the front as well, because you can toggle through all the features in this camera on the front screen, which is just incredible because if this is mounted on a handlebar or it's mounted somewhere that, you know, you can't see the back screen, that is such a really big thing because you're gonna be able to change whatever setting you want without having to go to that back screen. Hey, how you going? My name's Dane Kinnaird. I'm the writer for Freestyle Kings. Um, I'm known as the Combo King. I do multiple tricks in one jump. Um, I've been doing it since I was seven years old. I stopped when I was 26 and then started back up again when I was 38. So I'm three years into it now and absolutely loving it. Um, I ride pretty much every weekend and I'm not stopping now till I can't walk. Uh, what bike do you have? Uh, currently I'm riding a, a YZ250, um, it's a two stroke, I'll never change, I'm old school, I'll always stay two stroke, I'll never ride a four stroke ever. <laughs> <laughs> and what's uh, future plans? Um, future plans is just really just to have fun, I've already done it all before. Um, yeah, I'd love to get invited to do some major comps or whatever, but if it happens, it happens, if it doesn't, I've already done it before. and. I'm happy to leave the door open for the younger kids. So I'm just happy showing my kids what I can do. Um, I've got a two, a five and a nine year old. So uh, I just want to show them that, you know, you can have fun at any age and just enjoy life. There's no real plans, just rolling with the punches really. I've already done it, like I said. So I'm just having fun and um, see where it takes me. Three brother. Perfect. All right, thank you. Awesome. So overall, the Action 4 has done extremely well. I really think this is a really good action camera, but you really do have to tune in the right settings, whatever you're doing. Just remember with the stability, you have to crank the shutter majority of the times. In low light performance, you really need to find out, you know, how much noise suppression to put in, what shutter speed you're gonna be at, uh, and also obviously what ISO level you're going to be at as well. But yeah, this thing is incredible and I absolutely do recommend this one. So anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give it a thumbs up that would be amazing subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching let's get it